Okay, now we've covered uh, one particular rotation in detail. So now we're going to cover what are the six cases of rotation. And we're not going to do the uh, all the code in this or the code for delete uh, that's left as an exercise uh, in the book. So when you call rebalance, there's six cases. And we've done one of them. We've done the right rotate, which is the one down here, where you have a uh, unbalance all the way on the left child's here and it rotates the C up here and you get the right rotate. Uh, then there's an equivalent left rotate rotate where you have the right child's are all greater than each other and you rotate this way which is left and you end up with this. Now we have an unusual case, two other cases, where you have uh, a right child and then under that you have a left child. So this is heavy on the right by two so the way you do this is by doing two rotates in sequence. You do a right rotate on these bottom two with an imaginary right child off E. So you're basically moving the C up here and E down here. When you get this, then when you get this, now you can just do a normal left rotate. So you just left rotate the C up and the B down. So you get this. So here's the code for this. And we have the ifs here to uh, determine uh, which type of rotate it is. So you notice it checks the balance factor of the node and then it checks the right child balance factor. So then you can get the uh, that you have this case. Uh, okay, here's the equivalent to the one up here. This one is you have its left heavy uh, but it, it has a left child and then a right child under where here. So we have to left rotate this first and then right, and we get this, and then we right rotate this whole string to get this. So this is called a left-right rotate. And so here's detecting that. When this balance factor is less than, and the right child's balance factor is greater than, uh, we get this. This is the else condition down here. It's just that the, uh, the node and the child are both in the same direction, and the same with uh, this one down here. So those are all the six cases. Uh, one more thing they cover in the book is the last two lines that set the balance factor for the new node. So here's the uh, new node when we, where this is going to be a left rotate. So this D will go up here and the B will go down. So they have to set a new balance for B and D. So uh, we got, we're going to, so he goes through this in the book and I'm not going to go through all the math. But basically, if you look at the original tree, uh, we have a possible subnode on A, C, and E under the uh, two. E will get rotated up, and it doesn't. Uh, the height of it won't change. These are the heights: the height of the A subtree, the height of the C subtree, the height of the E subtree, and the height of the H subtree. I mean, the D subtree. So you can write these equations. The new balance will be the height of A minus the height of C. So if you look over, this is where we're going. So the new, the new balance of B will be the height of A subtree minus the height of C. And those heights existed in the uh, previous here. And then the old balance uh, of B is equal to HA minus HD. So the old balance of B is the height of HB minus the height HD. So we have these two equations, but we also have the old balance of B is also HA. So the old balance of B is a height of HA uh, minus the right side, and we can express the right side as this This is a height of 1, plus whichever this, this is bigger, so the max of HC or HE. So that's the total height of this subtree. So this is an equation here. So these three equations you can combine with algebra, which he goes through in the book, and you eventually arrive at this equation, that the new balance of B is equal to the old balance of B plus 1 minus the min of 0 and the old balance of D. And equivalently, you can find out the new balance of D. And so that's what's uh, plugged into the code that we looked at earlier. And that pretty much finishes it for uh, the AVL and balancing trees. Just to note that the, the, the book code 
uh, cover, he writes that code to cover a lot of more aspects of uh, uh, balanced trees. For example, successor and predecessor, and he leaves open completing the deletion and things like that. So he's made a lot of decisions uh, because he's teaching a lot more about uh, working with trees uh, than we would normally need in a AVL tree. So in fact, uh, if you look at a lot of AVL tree implementations, they don't have a pointer up to the parent for every node, uh, so they're much simpler. So I, I basically did a, a Python version which implements everything that you can look up here under github.com Jerry Jenkins LB slash Python AVL. So you go to this link and it'll look like this and you'll have AVL tree. AVL tree is a simplified version uh, that uh, is only 141, so that's about half the code of the author's code. And then there's a test uh, suite that test it all works, and there's some utilities that are useful. So you can take a look at this when you have time.